here. So today we're going to talk about our relationship with money. And so the first thing I would like to know from all of you is how would you describe your current relationship with money? And you can just type out one to two sentences in the chat. And I want all of you to do this. This is, yeah, so because I want to see where everyone is at right now. So if you want, you can take a moment, think about it. And once you've thought about it, uh, share in the comments, how would you describe your current relationship with money? Right, one to two sentences. Okay, Brinda says chasing money. Rob says, I love and value it as a precious gift. I would like to read everybody's comments on this one. Ash says, nervous, dependent, and instable. Eustace says, open relationship, receiving, and giving. Mandara says, borrowed. Julia says, let it flow in. Okay. What about the rest of you? Nandini says, finding love again after a bad divorce. Shreya says, not as good as it could be. I think about it a lot, but not fully secure with it. Okay. Nice. Sonal has also joined us in. Okay. Cool. So I'm happy to receive all of your comments about how your current relationship with money is. So the first thing that I want to shift your perspective about money is to help you realize what uh, money has actually done for you in life. Okay. Now, what do I mean by this? So if you think of money as an entity, what you will realize is that money itself has always supported you in life. Like, what do I mean by that? Well, you see, one of the things that I want you to understand is, unfortunately, because this was a concept which is never really taught to you, mm, what we did through our childhood and through our adolescence and even into our adulthood is we projected a lot of negative attributes or negative conversation or negativity in general that was happening around us in life. Like, you know, our parents were having some conversations. We might have had some argument with our loved ones and we might have had different differences in opinion and all kinds of these things. And what we did is like we projected all of those wrong ideas onto money. Now, uh, I hope this point is clear to everyone. Like, if you recognize what I'm talking about, uh, say me, or if you don't understand, say confused. Like, when I say that what you did through your childhood is, okay, Prabh says confused. What about the rest of you? Like, if you understand what I'm saying, okay, Brinda also says confused. Okay, cool. So, uh, let me let me kind of explain, okay? So, suppose when you were a child and you were, let's say, eight-year-old or nine-year-old and you saw your parents arguing about money. You saw your parents having uh, fights around money. Now, because you were a child who really loved, loved your parents or loves your parents, like what you would do is like you would think that money is evil or money is this, you know, bad guy who is creating, you know, problems between my parents. Like, does this idea resonate with you? Like, you know, if there's any kind of family struggle happening around money, like, you know, if there's some dispute happening around money. So what happened was like you projected that negativity onto money. 
Okay. So Rob says now it makes sense. So Sonal says no. What what do you uh, are you confused, Sonal, about this point? I'm not confused. It is one I it is one hypothesis which you are proposing. Yes. I, I don't see it that way actually. Okay, sure. I, I'm Would you like to share how you see it. No, I don't. I don't see that. Uh, while there was a fight between my let's say mom and dad about money, or there was some sort of tension about money, when I don't make money as evil. Okay. I make uh, somebody who who can't earn enough money evil. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, uh, to and, me, this and when sounds... I'm talking to you, when I when I'm when yeah. I'm when I'm telling you this, I'm some one childhood memory is coming to my mind. That my father used to say to me that said was that ये वाले काम तो पैसे वाले लोग करते हैं and he was like derogate uh, de talking that derogatory derogatorily ये वाली चीजें तो इस तरह की चीजें तो use पैसे वाले लोग करते हैं यार ये सब छोड़ दो so mm -hmm. it's like no 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 it's not for us and it's bad it's not required it's like over over show show off kind of thing so he was probably telling me that uh, show off or or luxurious life is uh, is probably not a very good way of life, not very good good living. So that way, my money was projected to me in a negative way, probably. Right, right. So got it. Thank you so much for sharing that. So you see, the point is, so what happens to all of these things is, we are forming our projections on the money. And it's not even we are forming. Like our society and our elders and like, you know, other people are putting their projections into our psyche because each one of you who is present in this webinar today would have had a different experience with money and a different conversation around it right but what i want to offer you today is a different way of looking at the same thing which is now if you think of money as a separate entity okay like just the way you're dealing with your mom, you're dealing with your dad and your mom is different from your dad, right? They're two separate human beings. You can't put parents in one bucket. So because your mom might have a very different attitude, some people are close to their mom, some people are close to their dad, you know, like, so it's different, right? And like your cousin is a different person, your cha-cha is a different person. So each person is a different entity who has their own personality. Some of them are dependable, some of them are you know angry some of them get irritated very easily some of them are very kind some of them are very forgiving so like that you see that every person has a different personality and now what i want you to understand is that if you were to kind of see money as a personality or as a person right and not as this disembodied entity that is just uh, formless shapeless without anything right so if you were to see money as a person or a personality, what you can observe is that actually money throughout your life has only supported you in multiple ways, like in every way possible, right? So what money has done for you is whatever decision you made, money supported you. Like if you chose to go on a holiday, like if you had money, it would support you. It would never be like, you know, hey, don't do this, do that instead. Like if you chose to buy something, if you want to eat something, like money will help you buy it or eat it. Like you're not in a position where like, you know, money will never come and judge you. Money would like, see, whether you're doing something good or you're doing something bad, doesn't matter. Like whether you choose to buy fruits or you choose to buy biscuits, money will support your every decision. Money doesn't come and say that, you know, hey, don't do this, do that instead. This is not acceptable. This is bad. This is lousy. This is better. So it's not coming and nagging you. It is not coming and irritating you. It doesn't like, you know, do any of these things. So actually, uh, that's point number one. The second thing is that money has only upgraded the quality of your life, like in every way possible. Again, your choices are yours. Like money is not responsible for your choices. Money as a being just lets you do whatever you want to do. Like 
you know, uh, now if you have money, money is very happy to upgrade the quality of your life. Like if you're in a hot place, you can get an AC, you know, if you want to go for a holiday or you want to eat some food, you want to stay in a nice place, you want to buy flight tickets, whatever it is that you want to do in every way, money has only upgraded the quality of your life. And the third thing that I want to share with you is that it, it never really judged you. It never kept any grudges against you. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Even if you had like, you know, negative perceptions about money, like money is always like, you know, like you still have it in your life. Like all of you who are here, who are part of this program, well, you clearly have enough money to like pay for this program, pay for your laptop, pay for the internet and all these other things. So which means you still do have money in your life. And like it hasn't like left you and gone away and abandoned you completely. You know, it's like it's still been kind to you, even if you have kind of been unkind to it sometimes. So this is the first thing where I wanted to shift your perspective about money slightly. Okay. If it's clear, type clear, or if you want, I can clarify a little bit more. Okay. Uh, can I ask a quick question? Yes, go ahead. So uh, what you said, it is very clear. Yes. But like sometimes I get this thought when I am told to think about or when I think about how much money would I like to have. Uh, mm -hmm. And I get this thought that uh, should I be not be satisfied with the, the amount of money I have or is this thought breeding the greed in me? Like what amount of money is enough? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if I would say that I want 100 throws a year and then the second thought is, am, am, I, am I being greedy? Uh, is whatever I already have in life, is that not sufficient? I'm able to buy whatever I need. And then why that thought is there? So how does one like uh, uh, discern what is happening in that situation in the head and make sense out of it and move forward? Got it. Got it. Beautiful question. Thank you for asking. Uh, so, so the thing is, I would say you can have as much as you can possibly imagine. If you're able to imagine 100 crores, by all means, you should have it. Now, the way to shift this thought process of association is by essentially understanding that you are a custodian of wealth. It's not, <clears throat> it's not yours. Like You don't actually have 100 crores. It's like you are managing 100 crores. Because you see, the nature of money is it's essentially it is spiritual energy in motion. That's what money actually is at its core. Now you can't eat it, you can't like you know merge with it, it'll exist in some form. You know, it's like and you would like if you had a hundred crores, you wouldn't keep like hundred crores in your bank account. You would have some of it as liquid cash, and some of it would be you know invested in real estate, some of it would be in doing some other things. And so even if you had, like, so if you said, I have a hundred crores, what does that mean? What it means is that you have a net worth of a hundred crores. So you have assets which represent a hundred crores. Now, if you are using those assets really well, so first of all, the fact that you have a hundred crores, it means that you have done a good job in managing whatever was given to you. And so the universe has given you more to manage. And so that's a blessing. So we don't see it as greed because which is what we are over here. Our entire focus is on selfless service because we are not only interested in accumulating wealth and money, but we are here to make a difference onto the planet. We are here to serve the whole. And in that sense, money is a tool. It is an enabler. The more you have, the better you manage it. The more you're being of service to the planet because the planet wants more and more you know spiritual spiritually inclined people to have access to greater amounts of wealth like what kind of world would we rather live in like you know like uh, as a thought experiment 
let's say uh, in one world, only all the corrupt politicians and the bureaucrats are the only people who have upwards of 100 crores of wealth. Okay, that's world number one. And world number two, where, okay, uh, there are a bunch of like corrupt bureaucrats and politicians who have north of 100 crores, but there are also like a vast number of really good people who have created lots of value and who are like working diligently to make the world a better place who also have like north of 100 crores. Like as a person, as a normal citizen who does not have even say one crore of net worth, which of the two planets would you like to live on? I'm sure everyone of would like to live on planet B, right? So I hope that answers your question when you're thinking of like a greater amount of money. So the way you can think about it is don't see it as like, you know, I have a hundred crores. It doesn't matter how much you have. You just see yourself as a custodian of wealth and you are rendering a service to the universe. Like the more money you're able to manage, like think of it this way. The universe genuinely wants to give you more. Okay. It really does. Because if it sees that, okay, you are someone who has like a good heart and good capabilities and all those things, it wants to give you more. But you must demonstrate to the universe that you're capable of handling that wealth. Only when you can do that, will the universe give you more. Make sense? Like I can actually yeah, it give you a, a, a simple, you know, analogy. Like, let us say uh, you have a small child, you know, he's like a like a five-year-old child and this five-year-old child wants an ice cream and so you go to the shop and you buy the ice cream and you know the guy at the counter puts one scoop on the phone and now this child is eating this ice cream and let's say the child is now not capable of handling the ice cream and that one scoop falls off the cone Right? And now this child is sitting and crying, saying that, hey, my ice cream fell off. I want some more ice cream. Would, would you go to the counter and buy this child like a triple scoop ice cream? Obviously not. No. Because this child was not able to handle even one scoop. So you wouldn't obviously give them three. Right? But you don't mind giving them. It's just that they have demonstrated that they can't handle it. So you're not going to give them something they cannot handle. It's the exact same relationship that we have with the universe, right? And so if you are, if you have a hundred crores or one crore or any amount of money in between, at any point, you only look at yourself as a custodian of wealth. And what you're doing is providing a valuable service to the advancement of the planet. And when you see it from that point of view, you will naturally see that it doesn't matter. You, know, you could have 100 crores, you could have 1,000 crores, you could have 10,000 crores. And all levels are good because you're not necessarily doing it just for yourself. Like the point of you having more money doesn't, because see, at some point you must realize that you cannot live in 10 houses simultaneously. You cannot drive six cars at the same time. You can only drive one car and no matter how much money you have, there's only a certain amount of food that you can eat. And so there has to be a fundamental shift in our point of view of the purpose of wealth in our life. And which is what we are like, that's my intention through this whole series. What we're working on is to help that shift occur in everyone's brain who is over here is that the point of our life, of our work, of our wealth, of everything is to serve the planet, is to serve the universe. And it is in this relationship where we serve the planet, we serve the universe, that the universe will take care of us and the planet will nourish us. And this is how we can establish a beautiful, harmonious relationship between ourselves and the whole make sense wow it does make a lot of sense so i just wanted to like uh so in that case can i look at money as a yardstick of uh 
my spiritual growth or how i how well i am walking the path does does that make sense absolutely yes so your wealth in life is a yardstick of how much value you are actually providing to the world mm-hmm. it's just that simple like now if so i am able case, to yes sorry so in that case shouldn't my focus be on the value and not how much i want to earn correct absolutely that's that's the point that hits the nail on its head like what we want to do is we want to maximize the amount of value that we're delivering to the world but the reason we're talking about wealth as well is because what it does is it closes the loop okay now what do i mean by that now uh, like suppose like i have a business okay like right now i am doing a business you right? know like now you have paid me money and you are part of this program which is you know helping all of you upgrade your mindset correct like now let's say there's like uh, currently like 11 to 12 people in this program now this is the number of people who have decided that okay i'm going to actually pay this guy and get this service and like receive that value so now i'm giving out value right but i can impact more as well i could impact like 100 people or 200 people but now when i look at wealth and money as a measure what happens is that uh like it is able to help me track the whole process because see i could just put out a video on youtube as well right and hope more people watch it but the thing is like over here now uh in this process like all of you are actually committed your working week on week and you you kind of put in the time to transform yourself and that is what wealth is allowing me to measure that you know it's like uh am i actually putting a dent you know am i actually making a difference because if you give away something for free well you might think that you're giving value but is it really transforming the other person it's hard to really measure does it make sense yeah yeah it does and what i am now thinking is it really also helps in goal setting for me because if i am setting my goal and i say i want to create a lot of value that doesn't mean anything like if i am an athlete if i set a goal that i want to be able to run a 100 meter in under so many seconds it's quite tangible and it's quite motivating likewise if i say i want to be able to create 100 crores worth of value in the next 3 years that's more tangible more solid for me right does that also make sense right absolutely it does okay and another thing you know something that i have always been maintaining over here is uh uh the price to value i have mul- mentioned it multiple times but i'll keep bringing it again and again what we must aim to do is we must aim to deliver at least 10 times the value of the price that we're charging so mm-hmm. say for example if you are helping heal somebody right so uh like if you are made a change in their life and that change is helping them save say 5 lakh rupees like if somebody was kind of almost pre diabetic and like now if they continued on that path and they end up having diabetes and and you know on that trajectory they end up in the hospital and then you know all their medical bills their everything put together is going to cost them say 5 to 10 lakhs and if you are able to like change their you know uh, change their diet if you are able to like change their habits if they able to change their lifestyle and all of that and as a result this person does not go to the hospital is living a very happy healthy energetic life then you have actually given them a value of say 5 lakhs right and if you're giving them a value of 5 lakhs then it's perfectly okay for you to charge 50000 and so from that point of view if you want to make say 100 crores that means you would actually have to deliver value of like a thousand crores to the universe or to this planet yeah wow fantastic that that really puts it all together for me thank you so much wonderful wonderful okay um, cool vishnu i have another question you mentioned yes. you mentioned that you know 
universe gives more to people who are capable of managing wealth. I, yeah. I don't understand when you say capable of, what should I do now that universe gives me more? How should I be able to, you know? What exactly do you mean by capable of managing wealth? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, let me let me put it this way, okay? Uh, suppose uh, you have, uh, let's just say that, you know, mm, say you have uh, five or six, say, grandchildren, okay? As a, imagine, as a thought experiment, let's say you have. Now, uh, and you are a very wealthy businesswoman, you know, it's like you have, uh, like, you had a successful company, you know, you, you were running for like, you started when you were very young and all of that stuff. And so now you have six grandchildren. And so what you do is, first of all, like, let's say to start with, you give like, you know, when they're still young, uh, when they're in their teenage, you give each one of them, say, 10,000 rupees, all six of them. And so 60,000 rupees now you've given to six of your grandchildren, which is peanuts, is nothing for you, really. And now you see how each one, what each person is actually, each of your grandchild is doing with that money. So let's say uh, one guy goes to party and he gets drunk and he like, you know, they're all, let's say all of your grandkids are like around 16 to 18 years of age. And some of them get drunk and some of them are partying. And, you know, it's like, let's say one grandchild is like helping somebody else. And then, you know, one buys a watch for himself. One like, so different like you know each one of your six grandchildren does something different okay and you observe their behavior you notice what they're doing okay so suppose uh one of them has actually like you know uh like let's say like some of your grandchildren have used this money really wisely and some of them have actually created more trouble for themselves and the family like one of the grandchild, you know, got drunk and then he, he, like, he was passed out somewhere in the bar and his friends had to, like, pick him up and then drop him at home. Would you give any more money to the one who was passed out? No. Right? Now, on the other hand, let us say there was one who kind of, like, you know, uh, donated, say, 2,000 rupees at some orphanage and then he used uh, some of it, you know, in order to, like... Uh, say, buy a course or like, you know, do something like he bought a couple of books for himself, you know, and and he bought like a watch. And now he's he's using that and then he's he's invested like, you know, he's, he put like some 2000 into savings and then he bought some books, bought a watch and then gave some money to an orphanage. Would you be more likely to give more money to this guy? Yes. That is what I mean by managing money well. Does so, it make sense so, now? Yes. Can I say that the way we respect money and way it is used in the right way, the more we get it? Is that is my understanding right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, because one of the things that I want to shift in your mind for all of you is that when from going forward from now on, uh, whenever you are thinking about money or you think about the universe, don't think of it as some, you know, disembodied, formless, shapeless, random, mysterious thing out there. Just think of it as another person. In fact, you put yourself in their shoes. Like imagine you were the universe and you were looking at yourself. How would you feel about yourself, your own actions, right? And see it that way. And so don't think of this as some very far or very like an octopus or like some alien creature or something unimaginable. Just Imagine yourself in their shoes, okay? Which brings us to our current exercise that I want you to all do right now, which is for a moment, uh, like imagine, like you see yourself as money, okay? Now think of this as a relationship, which is like how you have, like you have like boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever, like, you know, uh, father, daughter, you know, uh, brother, sister, whatever. We have different relationships. Now, in the same ways, you have a relationship with money, okay? Now, uh, like you're a couple, okay? Like it's a relationship between two entities. But what I want you to do right now is 
just close your eyes for a moment and imagine instead of you being prab instead of you being julia like imagine you are money okay like as a human being as a as the person that you are like imagine you are money and then see what as money how do you see your relationship with prab with mandira with shriya with nandini with jozi like put yourself in the others shoes like see from money's point of view okay and i want you to all do i, I want all of you to do this just close your eyes for a moment and see what you see and once you observe something then type it in the comments and let me know how, what do you observe what do you notice in this relationship when you switched roles when you put yourself in the others shoes as money can you just quickly say again i didn't i didn't catch that okay cool now imagine there is a relationship between nandini and money yeah okay. it's it's like a boyfriend girlfriend relationship thank okay? you okay now i want you to reverse your role like instead of looking at it from nandini's point of view oh okay mm -hmm. see from money's point of view how is nandini's relationship with money see so look from the other person's perspective so see right. as money how is nandini talking to money how is nandini treating okay. money how is nandini Got behaving with money like that so i want all of you to give me your answers okay yet to receive an answer from josie from julia okay so josie answer is here julia i want you to share your answer as well and from mandira also from sonal as well from shweta as well so i want all of you to share your answers okay cool nice so so prab says as money i'm being ignored justice says avoidance okay now shreya says you're holding on to me too tight not spending me giving me away more freely ash says anxious and avoidant josi says i'm attracted to the outcome and creation of value okay but josie what do you see from money's point of view as josie's relationship with money okay shweta says sometimes careless sometimes disciplined prop says taken for granted nandini says ignored and didn't care for many years now dating again and enjoying it which is wonderful brinda says why are you afraid of me you can care more and be wise with me you look at me as always not reachable hmm. mandira says money has been very kind to me i have it okay all right cool so thank you so much for all of your answers wonderful so i'm so glad uh, wonderful thank you for sharing all of this okay sonal says sonal uses me to have a comfortable life he doesn't keep me with him sonal uses me for unnecessary things and waste me okay wonderful thank you so much for being so honest and sharing all of this okay so now what i want you to do is as an exercise now that you have thought about it from the point of view of money i want you to take 10 minutes okay and i'm going to set a timer and what i want all of you to do is in the next 10 minutes write a love letter to money like think of money as your boyfriend or girlfriend however you want whichever you prefer uh and 
from the depth of your heart, I want you to express as much love as you possibly can. Okay. So I want you all to write this letter. And at the end of 10 minutes, I'm going to like uh, ask each and every one of you to share your love letter with money with the rest of the group. All right. And I'm just going to start the timer. And your time starts now.
Okay, so 10 minutes are done. Uh, who would like to go first? Anyone who's done with their love letter who would like to share? Go ahead. But you need to unmute yourself. Okay, sorry, can you hear me? Well, I think Prabh started sharing. Okay, go ahead, Prabh. I can't hear him. Dear love, I have been ignoring your presence for too long. I now see how in the background, irrespective of how I cared for you or not cared you or not, you always voted my life in every way. To the extent that I forgot that you were even there and started taking you for granted. You helped me access everything I've always wanted without asking a question. I now see you as so unconditionally loving, accepting, caring, always there for me. I have been chasing things in search of the divine, but perhaps you are the divine incarnate, the secret hand supporting my life all the time. The guru in my life who is always there to help me access whatever I need to improve my life and make the most of it. I now feel great respect for you, immense gratitude and love. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also feel immense expansion beyond myself and the potential of our partnership, the potential that our partnership holds in adding value to the world. How you can extend me far and wide and together we can create such positive impact much beyond the physical capacity of one man. Ah, uh, Are you a channel, a secret access to the divine energy vibrating across the universe? I now feel closer to God thinking about you and who you really are, like a doorway to God itself. Wow, so nice. That was lovely. Thank you so much for sharing that, brother. Thanks for the inspiration. <laughs> wow. Actually, I think it would be amazing, uh, like, you know, if, uh, okay, after you guys are done, I'll tell you. First, I want to hear from everyone. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Ash, you want to share next? Sure. Amazing, Prav. I love that. Um, okay, so mine, um, love letters to money. Thank you for always being there when I needed you. Thank you for always being enough. Thank you for taking me on amazing adventures. Thank you for teaching me how to live without you. Thank you for reflecting my inner world back to me. Thank you for always coming back when I needed you. Thank you for making me feel safe and protected. Thank you for treating me like a queen. Thank you for never running out. Thank you for this new chapter in our relationship. Wow, awesome, lovely. All right, who would like to share next? Go ahead, Sumi. Uh, dear Mani, I love you. You have been so kind to me. You have helped me to lead a good and comfortable life. I'm so grateful to you. Because of you, I have expressed, I have experienced food in great restaurants, foreign travel, traveled by flights, seen so much of the world. You have been extremely kind to me. You love me so much that you keep me, keep coming back to me. Uh, you, your presence in my life gives me so much of confidence. You allow me to pursue my interests, follow my dreams, eat great food, uh, stay in luxurious hotels. You are such a blessing. You give me so much. You enable me to get health checks, meet good doctors when required, enroll me into value offering programs. You allow me to offer support system to myself and my father. You allow me to have good clothes, take good care of good spa treatments, have great furniture, eat great foods and fruits and vegetables, own a nice house because of, I own a nice house because of you. You are so kind. I have not been taking care of you till now enough. I'll take care of you with extreme love now. Please forgive me for using for you for unnecessary things. I'll be taking support of you to enjoy meaningful experiences. Thank you so much. Please stay with me. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. Lovely. So beautiful. All right. Who would like to go next? Mm, I think I can go. Go 
Yes. Um, dear Cash, I know I did not see it for a long time, but it seems we had a relationship since I was a child. We went through a lot, and even though sometimes I neglected and avoided you, you still stuck around. Even though I was uh, able to manage you well and not waste you on honest things, I always felt I did not want to have more responsibility to, to, to manage bigger amounts of you. Somehow, when more of you came to my life, I felt burdened and lo uh, lost in making decisions what to do with you. I know that I am not perfect and I am working on learning from my mistakes. Sometimes I feel moved uh, uh, moved my focus with uh, sometimes I feel I moved my focus to work on other areas meanwhile ignoring you sorry about that I want to deeper our uh, connection and have more of you in my life I love you and I bless you oh thank you so nice okay go ahead dear money I have I have grown up, uh, sorry, I have grown up seeing you as though you're not achievable and you're somewhere and I cannot access you. I feel that you're difficult to attain with ease. In my adult life, when you came to me, I did not respect you and took you for granted and let you go with whoever and whichever way. I have literally killed you on all unnecessary things that have harmed my body and mind. And here you are with me again. I'm taking baby steps to care for you in the right way and remove all the barriers. Today, I give up all the fears and blocks as I surrender to you. And I know that you are and have always been with me. You're my God who has came to help me help. You're my God who has come to help experience this life form to the fullest. So you are me. Thank you and ever loving and surrender to you completely. Money, I see you as Shiva. You are Shiva. Wow, so nice. Lovely. Wonderful. Okay, so then who would like to share next? I can go next. Go ahead, Shreya. Dear Mani, I love you a lot. We've had our ups and downs in the past. I haven't always trusted you. I've sometimes clung on to you too tight and not recognized your value and how much you can help me and how much you want to help. I'm changing this now. I love you. I respect you. I trust you. I won't hold on tightly. I have full faith that you'll always be by my side and that I'm making the right decisions with you by my side. I know that my love for you means that I can set you free and you'll always come back to me many times multiplied. I'm grateful for you being there all along and for you always finding me. And I love you. Wow, wonderful. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Okay, I think Mandira, would you like to share next? Yes. <clears throat> Dearest Mani, I love you. I know I have been callous and angry, blamed you. You have always been there for me. I'm sorry for being erratic, judgmental. And have always wanted, I have always wanted you, but never made an effort to understand you. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but from here on, I will be present. Sorry for all the complaints and desperation. Let's start afresh, a new way of living life together and growing together. We are now in a committed relationship. Wonderful. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read Josie's letter, because she's in a library and she can't read right now. She says, Dearest Money, first of all, I want to apologize for all the negative things I have ever said about you, and also all the negative feelings I have ever felt about you. The truth is that I projected my fear and the fear of my parents and their parents onto you. Please forgive me. I really want to change the relationship between us so that we can both experience joy, ease, and flow with each other. From now on, I will do my best to create a harmonious field through which we will blossom. Dear Money, I commit myself and I accept and love you 
just as you are, you are perfect. And I am blessed to have you in my life. Thank you for everything you have done for me. In love, Josie. Nice. Thank you so much for that, Josie. Okay, wonderful. I'm so happy with all of your letters. All right. So Which, with that, you know, before you yes. go ahead, I just want to tell you one thing. You you say this paisa vasool, right? Yeah. You say the value, right? I think today I just I just got that value. I feel the blocks are just have just disappeared. Like true <laughs> true connection, you know. I I could just feel that Advaita feeling for money where. Money is me. I can feel it. Thank you so much. Gratitude. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brinda. Yo, yeah, seriously, yo. I would like to just uh, uh, jump on the same wagon. Like, today is a really mind-blown moment for me. Like, oh. I have never thought about money like this. And I am so, like, full of uh, really motivated uh, looking forward. And this is such an amazing gift. Boy, God is with me all the time. It's like something really real with you. So it's it's a beautiful shift. Thank you so much. Wow, my God. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Okay. So with that, I will share my screen with you guys again. Okay. So now that we have done this exercise, uh, I want you all to remember now that... This is an ongoing relationship that you have with money, okay? So I don't want you to just think of this as a one-off thing that today we did the exercise and then a couple of days later you forget about it because as you've all had this shift in your perspective now that now you're starting to see money in a different light, like as your boyfriend, girlfriend, as your partner, however you want to see it, you see, you must understand that this is, love is an ongoing process. It has to come from the depth of your being. Like, and so while we might have neglected money in the past and had all of these things, going forward, like when I say ongoing relationship, like just how, like, you know, like I don't try to give love to, I would say my girlfriend, but now my wife. Yeah, I mean, I just give it, you know, it's like it just comes from the depth of my heart. And in the same way, you must have, that love for money in everything that you do. Like, you know, every time you pull a couple of uh, notes of cash from your wallet, like fold it with love and interact it with love and let love be the foundation of all of your financial interactions. Okay. So can I have all of your commitment? And so if you're committed to doing this, type committed in the chat. So you're all committed to this relationship where you are going to be a very, very wonderful partner in this relationship from your side. Okay, wonderful. All of you are committed. That's really good. Happy to hear that. Now, the next thing that I want to bring to your attention is the idea that every transaction that you make has its own energy like every transaction has an energy signature. Now, this is a concept I'm sure you might not have come across till now, because usually when we think of transactions, we only think of the financial volume, like either you're you know, buying samosa for 10 rupees or you're buying you know, watermelon for 100 rupees or you're buying a t-shirt for like 500 rupees or, like, you know, or you pay for dinner for like 1,000 bucks or you buy some flight tickets, or you pay somebody's salary, or whatever. It's like, and you're only looking at the, the size of the transaction, you know, whether it's 500 rupees, or 5,000 rupees, or 50,000 rupees. But today, what I want you to understand is that each one of those transactions also has an energy signature attached to it. What do I mean? Well, whatever the money may be, whether you're spending 5 rupees, or 5,000 rupees, or 50,000 rupees, like, are you giving it happily or are you trying to like, you know, uh, are you a bit unhappy about that transaction? Like, what is the energy with which you are engaging in a transaction? So what I want you to do from now on 
is to become mindful of what you are doing. Okay. Like, for example, like, uh, do you give generously? Like, if you're going to buy some vegetables, like, are you bargaining for like five rupees? Are you trying to get the most out of like every transaction? Or are you giving with an open heart? Are you giving with generosity? Are you giving happily or are you giving unhappily? Okay. And the same thing about receiving as well. Like, how do you receive money? Like, uh, whether it's your salary that comes in or like, you know, somebody gives you a little bit of money or any money that comes into your life from any channel. Like, how do you receive it? Do you receive it with an open heart? Do you receive it with a lot of gratitude? Do you celebrate receiving money? Or are you just indifferent about it? Like, you know, it's like you just see there's a notification that, okay, uh, 50,000 rupees got credited to your account. You're like, oh, okay, fine. And then you carry on. Right. So what are you doing? Right. This is a very, very important step. And what I want you to do from now on is give a lot of awareness to both giving and receiving. Every time you give money, give it with a lot of joy, with a lot of gratitude. You can have gratitude to money for because when you give money, you're obviously getting some service or product in exchange. Whether you're buying a t-shirt or you're buying a bus ticket or you're booking a flight or you're paying for accommodation or you're paying for dinner or you're paying your maid or anything, you know, it's like somebody has given you a service or a product and in exchange for their service or product, which you decided to get for yourself in order to enrich your life, you are giving them money. Yes, that is the giving component. And so when you're giving money to anyone, I want you to give with gratitude. Give graciously. Feel so much love for money that money is enabling you to get this service, to get this product. And have that beautiful loving feeling that, you know, it's like, let money be the love of your life. You know, it's like the lover that you love so much who is you know, bestowing these beautiful gifts onto you, be it an amazing dinner, be it a bus ticket, flight ticket, anything, whatever it may be, right? And it is in that spirit that you must do all of your spending, like whatever money that goes out of your hands, goes out of your pocket, must go only in that format, okay? And so you must think about it that how can you spread joy in every transaction, like whatever, like, you know, if you go to buy, say, sugarcane juice, like, can you give them like, you know, uh, 20 rupees extra and like, you know, give a smile, make that person laugh or, you know, uh, make them feel really good. Like, what can you do so that all of your financial transactions, either the money is coming in or going out, in either one of them, like, the involvement is one of joy, of love, of happiness, of gratitude. Can we, can we do that going forward? That yes, if you're all committed to doing this. Okay. Wonderful. Likewise, whenever you receive money, yeah, I don't want you to be like, you know, indifferent to it. Don't just see it as some numbers in an SMS that you received about updating your bank balance. I want you to really celebrate it. Like, you know, every time, Every time you give money or you receive money, like you can do a little dance inside, you know, it's like if you're by yourself, if you're in your house, you can quite literally dance, you can jump, you can shout, you can, you can, you know, celebrate it. Like, you know, you can be like, whoa, whoa, whoa yeah, amazing. And if you're outside in a public place and you don't want to do that, you can, you can at least dance in your imagination. Yeah. Like suppose you go out to, you know, drink some sugarcane juice and uh, you pay this guy like 200 bucks. So when you pay him those 200 rupees, you might not dance in front of him, but you can at least dance in your imagination. You know, you can like really celebrate that transaction. So you give him that 200 rupees and you feel so much joy that first of all, you have the facility to give him money and he's giving you this, you know, sugarcane juice in return. And so it really celebrate every financial transaction. All right. And that is your exercise for this week. 
but ideally i don't want you to stop with just this week but i want you to continue this as a habit going forward like uh, even after this week i want you to do this all the time okay so prab asks yes but bargaining isn't bad always right so see definitely it's not it's not bad all the time or anything see uh, essentially what i want you to understand is that what is the energy from which you are coming on the inside okay so uh, suppose of course like you know if you are buying a house and uh, you want to get the best deal of course you can do that you know? it's like because it might make a difference of like a couple of lakhs or like 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs like definitely but uh, because i have noticed you know it's like what happens is uh, people are going to buy vegetables okay and the veggies are for like 100 rupees or you know 150 rupees and then we go and now we're bargaining with uh, say a shopkeeper or like a like a vegetable vendor which is not really needed actually you know we can be far more gracious in our life and what we can focus on is in creating more and more abundance in our life like uh, everyone who is part of this webinar like at the very least like i would want all of you to aim to make at least 3 to 5 lakhs a month and if you have that cash flow happening into your life then you can also give very generously all right so mandira has a question go ahead mandira you can ask okay so uh, <clears throat> of late i i'm struggling with finances it's come down to where i've borrowed money from dad that's why the hence the first question you had asked the relationship with money i wrote borrowed uh, i'm feeling extremely low because of this yes and uh, there's too much of anger towards myself and towards the situation so now what do i do i mean he's helping he's not saying anything but uh, uh, financially right now i just seem to be going through an extremely tough phase uh, i was hospitalized my medical aim is not coming through um etc i mean it's uh, yeah the uh, i mean they've called me a fraud and things like that so it's i've just been on a, the last um, few days have been really bad my dad doesn't want to even listen to my side of the story um uh, this is of course regarding the medical aim uh to because we were hoping that that money would come through and he was giving me that money <clears throat> and i have reached out to people for work so far no nothing has turned into a so what do i do i'm just feeling very um embarrassed ashamed um i don't like this i mean i don't like living off my dad at all right right i got it so i completely understand your predicament okay so uh, see over here one of the things that you can do is you can cultivate gratitude even in this situation like when we can learn to be grateful for things that we don't understand entirely like if you see the situation as something that is there to help you grow and evolve as a being you can learn to accept yourself you can become peaceful you can become calm and you can love and accept yourself as well like while you're giving love to money also give abundance of love to yourself as well don't beat yourself up in this situation because that is only going to make your situation worse all right and so once you are able to love and accept yourself what you then do from this space is shift your focus as we've been discussing on what is the value that you can provide to the world like while you said that you have reached out to like different people in terms of work like rather than because see now in this interim period you know it's like when you're waiting for somebody to respond positively to your say job applications 
like what do you then do do you just sit at home and wait because that's the problem with that strategy is that while you are waiting like if our mind is not trained enough the mind is only going to torment us and torture us uh, beyond uh, like imaginable limits right it is very difficult to deal with a mind like that on the other hand if we have at least some value that we are able to give to the world whatever you have to think of that you know okay what is it i can actually genuinely share with this world that is of value and you start giving that value to the world and just focus on giving value right and cultivate love for yourself acceptance for yourself and love for money and invite it you know it's like uh, do it on a regular basis like convert all your negative thoughts into thoughts of love and gratitude and if we can have gratitude for situations and circumstances that we don't entirely understand that's a very very powerful thing to do because like does anyone over here have a story of how there was something which at some point seemed negative but like in retrospect it was actually a gift from the universe that actually helped them later on could be like a difficult life situation or anything else anyone has a story to share no i can share my go ahead bro so for me uh, my health issues while i was working uh, uh, almost all the time a very hectic working schedule uh it was then that i was just diagnosed with the tumor and i had to immediately undergo multiple surgeries and uh, i was in a relationship uh, that uh, broke when she came to know about uh, the health condition so all of a sudden a lot of things happened i started failing at what i was doing because my health was not keeping up and people were also not spending time with me because i was i was always down and in the bed or running to doctors so just in a fraction of a few weeks my entire life changed there was nobody around me there was no success there was no health there was no goal and it seemed very very hollow and it is that time that i started asking questions but i remember that at that time there was a certain trust inside of me that whatever will happen it will be okay i don't know where that came from even when i was going for surgery i was like i was always like chanting on the name why grow why grow it's going to be okay i am i, I have faith uh, while it was very tough but that is the time which enabled me to explore the dimensions of my life that i would never have and i really look at it as a blessing because i would have never asked those questions and uh, pursued pursued uh, a path to find answers to those questions and looking for those answers is really what gave me all that i could uh, get through this journey in my life so i do look at it with a lot of gratitude wow thank, thank you, you so much for sharing that brother okay wow. all right cool so the next thing that i want to share with you is how giving and receiving are two sides of the same coin okay and because often uh, i have noticed that people kind of don't uh, grasp this concept entirely but everyone over here i want you to understand that they are not really different it's like their reflections of each other so uh, because like you know sometimes what happens is on the giving side you know like we might not be giving in the most appropriate way and the same thing is reflected you know when we are receiving like how, like you know if you are into business for example the way you give money is how your customers will actually treat you so if uh, if you are gracious you receive comfortably and gracefully like if you are like you know uh, if you trouble other people when you are giving so when it comes time for you to receive the other people who will trouble you 
And so the key over here that I want you to understand is that these are not two different aspects. They're not independent of each other's, but they're two sides of the same coin and they're absolutely connected. And so what I want everyone to practice, just a reminder, is to give graciously and to receive willingly. Like both of these must be in order because money is spiritual energy which likes to flow. It doesn't like to stagnate. Okay. So uh, it's not a very bright idea that, okay, I have this pool of money that I'm just going to sit on and like I'm going to live the rest of my life on these savings and then I'm going to be very, very judicious. And that's also not a very good strategy. Like the way money likes to operate is by flowing, right? So, and that flow can happen when you serve the world, allow money to come into your life as a representation of the service that you're providing, receive money gracefully. And from what you receive, you spend it on a house, on food, on travel, on whatever, savings, investments, like, you know, gifting, donation, however you feel like in all of these formats. And you give gracefully. And in that way, you allow it to flow through your life. And you are thus a stream through which money is flowing. All right. So that's about it from me for today. And I'm open to all questions and answers. Yeah. Any comments? So any particular homework? Have yes. So I would say uh, one homework is uh, every transaction that you engage in hmm. in this week. Okay. Right? So you have to be aware of it. Like every time money comes in from anywhere, celebrate it. And wherever you're spending it, celebrate it. Like just infuse every financial transaction with the greatest amount of love, joy, happiness that you can possibly imagine. On both sides. That's one. And on... I mean, so both of these assignments are not just for this week, but they're more like you can focus on them this week, but then it's like an ongoing thing where also uh, your objective is to be the best lover for money, you know? So if you see yourself as money's girlfriend or boyfriend, like you, you try and be the best girlfriend slash boyfriend. Yeah, it's like, so if you were in the past in a relationship of neglect, and apathy and disregard now upgrade that relationship you know if you were into avoidance before now embrace it you know so like how would you just ask yourself the question how would you like to be treated from your you know by your boyfriend or girlfriend like you would like them to be in a certain way right like you wouldn't want them to just walk into the house go to the fridge or take out some food heat it up, eat it, and not even look at you, not talk to you, just ignore you completely. And then, you know, just come to you when they have a need for something. Like, would you like to be with such a person? Obviously not. You know, it's like, but if your boyfriend or husband or wife or girlfriend, if they walked into the house and the first thing that they did is they came to you and they gave you a hug and they kissed you all over your face, right? And they held you really tight. Like you would, you really like that. Yeah. That is what love is. It's not a programmed behavior. It's not like, you know, uh, okay, at 5, you know, 5.30 in the evening, I'll set a reminder so I have to kiss my wife. Like that's not really love. Yeah. So you can't operate in that way. So you can't have like reminders in order to like tell yourself to love money. It's like, that's a fake relationship. You can't do that. So what I'm encouraging you to do is inculcate a genuine loving relationship. Like be that person that you think the other would really appreciate. Can I share something? Yes, go ahead. 
so there was a time uh, many years ago when uh, i really really disrespected money and i would treat it you know um, very shabbily uh, <clears throat> because money was coming to me also very easily and my i had zero relationship with my ca or accountant i would keep my bills like in a bag you know complete disrespect then uh, the journey from there to the conmari method learning how to value documents and organize and all of that till yesterday i uh, i found a ca uh, a couple of years ago who's uh, she's my dad's friend's ca but this is the first time that it's happened i've actually gone and spent the day with her uh, also because i needed to look into accounts which i the earlier month there i would have like broken into sweat okay mm. but i had to deal with the issue heads on so i went i spent time i figured out where the problem was one this has got to do with accounts related to the film that i just finished two i have actually invited her home as a friend and she's going to come over i've never shared this relationship with like a ca or you know an accountant so it was wonderful there's wow. no fear. yeah and she was teaching me she was telling me some things as to because i'm a single person because uh, she knows how we function she know she understands how this industry functions so she was giving me her tips and i was like okay i will look into it as soon as and i we made you know we exchanged how we can help each other i mean how she can help me and it was brilliant i was no long i mean the fear was just not there wow so nice yeah lovely okay anyone else wants to share anything uh, any questions that you have from today's conversation any topic or concept on which i can create more clarity like if there's anything that was not super clear if i can elaborate on yeah so the... okay the two of you started talking simultaneously go ahead so you can ask first go ahead yeah, so 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 your your classroom concept class work concept was amazing i love that that you made us work for 10 minutes because i think that i always uh, under supernak works i'm i just here go here and there so it was very useful it was very helpful so similarly uh, for homework as well if you just if somebody can just put keep putting some sort of you can see reminders and some sort of structure should be there or some we can even uh, keep each other accountable or take support from each other that would be that would be great i mean that would be nice so that's a my suggestion to to you cool wonderful so yeah we can we can go ahead and do that so probably yes. i can share the assignment exercise for this week on the group yeah so yeah, that sure. everyone can see and the way we can encourage oh. each others is daily if somebody for this week shares at least one story like you know it's not necessary that all of you have to but at least if couple of you are sharing some stories i'm sure that will keep everyone else motivated as well yeah so you can share how uh, you thought about money or how you spoke to it or about your transaction like you know how something was different when you were giving or how you celebrated when you received it and so if you share your stories on the group at least if few people share every day i'm sure that will kind of remind everybody else and keep everyone a bit more motivated yeah awesome go ahead ash i have a question vishnu so you know uh, this webinar was nice um and it you know you kind of present money as like a like a positive force right but you know if you look at our world most of like the evil things in our world are 
really done for the sake of money. There's so much dark energy and bad history of humanity that is really completely related to money. You know, if there wasn't money, we wouldn't really be able to do a lot of the things that, you know, people do, like as far as like, you know, the violence we do on each other, because there's not that ability to keep and store and overstore for oneself, you know? So my question is kind of like, it's nice to think about money in a positive light, but also there's a lot of negative and dark energy related to money. And is money more of a neutral, neutral power, which you can kind of harness in any way? Because I feel like just looking at it as this wonderful, beautiful thing isn't maybe as if you look around and, you know, it's like, well, hmm, you know, a lot of the situations we're in is because of money and they're not good situations, you know, and okay. like poverty, poverty is created because of money. So no, uh, not just I'm, rich okay, I, I get, so I understand the question. So I would say there is an error, a thought process over here, right? Poverty is not created because of money. Poverty is created because of the absence of money. You know, so that's it's it's a big difference. But, well, yes. yes, but in the in the lack of having a mon like a monetary coin, everybody's on equal footing. Nobody is rich or poor. You know what I mean? So no, see, uh, in the absence of having a monetary coin, we would go back into chaos. Because as of now, our species is not at that level of consciousness. We're we're nowhere close to it. You know, and uh, what I mean by that is like. You see, right now, like all of you, you can just step outside and buy some food. Any food, you know, it's like you can go, you can go buy some bananas, you can buy idli, dosa, like whatever it may be. Yeah. In the absence of money, nobody is going to give you any idlis because that would ha then have to come out of love. Right, and we are not at that stage of consciousness yet. Yes, I agree right. with that absolutely. Right, and uh, because see, I have also thought about this topic for a long time, and which is why I have come to the conclusion that I'm at right now. And to reach that stage of planetary evolution, where, like you know, as I've said multiple times in the past, that you know how the cells of your body are all operating on the principle of love where each cell in your body is sharing its unique gift with the rest of the system. And that is how a hundred trillion cells are able to collaborate together. But we as a human collective are not yet at that stage of consciousness or that stage of evolution. Maybe someday in the future, but I don't see ourselves getting there in the next 10 years, in the next 30 years, in the next 50 years. Honestly, I don't. I see, on the other hand, that we're currently at a very, very low consciousness level as a species. And so at this level of consciousness, money has enabled us to vastly upgrade and improve our life. Like in the absence of money, we would be like our closest relatives, chimpanzees. Where, and you see, it is not money that has created the problem. It is our own inherent nature. We have brutality in our nature. And what we're doing now is we are projecting our brutality onto money, which is not really the case. Like money is not telling us to drop bombs on our brothers. We are doing that. Right? And so on that note, you see, it's not that money is the one who's causing these things and it's not that it's being done for money. It is through the possession of money that people gain power. And so they're doing it for themselves. It is like, you know, there could be a corrupt politician who wants to amass like a lot of wealth and say somebody is doing like a 2G scam or like a coal mining scam or like, you know, all these politicians that we hear about doing all of these things. They're not doing it for money. No, they're doing it for themselves. They want to accumulate as much money as they can. And so it is their nature, which is dark. And they just want to amass as much wealth as they can. But it's not money itself that has done anything negative. It's just flowing. So money, so would you say money is more like a neutral force? as opposed to being positive or negative? 
Uh, I would say it's more of a positive source. Like, uh, let me put it this way, you know, like say, I would say money is like water because it also likes to flow and it nourishes, it nurtures, it helps things grow. You know, it's like, it's like this thing that, you know, that encourages growth. But water can also cause floods, you know, water can also cause destruction. Like if you have like a cloud burst somewhere, like there might be people who end up dying in a flood, you know. But just because a bunch of people died in a flood, or if there's a drought in some place, and like, you know, in the absence of water, say a lot of people have died in some place. Can we then say that water is evil? Not really. Neither, like, can we say that water is neutral? Like, it kind of is neutral, but in general, I would say water is a positive element. You know, it has a nurturing aspect to it. It, it has a giving aspect to it. it. It grows things, yeah. But it can be used for negative as well. You know, you can use it in 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 any ways, right? So let's not take uh, what human beings are doing and project it onto money. And so what we want to focus on, especially in this group, is we want to entirely focus on the solutions. Like, okay, uh, we don't even want to think about the corrupt politicians. I don't want you to give them even your thought energy, because that's something that I've been insisting on multiple times, is that your thoughts are exceptionally powerful. So don't even think about them. Our job, all the people who are here, is to consistently dream the highest dream that we're capable of dreaming. And in order to manifest that dream into reality, we shall accept as much money as we possibly can with open arms. So that we are a force for positive change in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I love that, brother. I agree with you. I think that money is really mainly po a positive force, but, you know, and I don't think even most people use it in a negative way, but then the ones that do maybe get a lot of press and it kind of skews our, you know, perception towards it. But yeah, in general, money, you know, like water, you know, it's a perfect analogy where it really nourishes us and allows us to, you know, create a lot of abundance and beautiful manifestations here. So love that. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Yeah, Prabh, you also had a question. Sorry, we cut you off. No, no, no worries. So my question was, uh, like, I have had a few projects in my mind and projects that would add a lot of value to people who are in need of that particular solution, that particular, uh, who have that particular problem. But uh, then the thought comes to me that I can't like focus on multiple things at the same time and it has to happen one after the other. And in this interim, when while someone works from one thing after the other, there might be like some money which is sitting. Like I, I have money to uh, roll those projects into action, but not probably the bandwidth. So how does how do you come around that situation? Okay, cool. That's a wonderful question. So first thing is I always I recommend highly focusing. Yeah, uh, because like you know when we focus our energy in too many things, even if it's like three things, like our energy gets dissipated. Yeah, and our results diminish vastly. Like if you focus. On just one thing, that's amazing. You know, it's like then you can give all of your energy to that. Now, coming to how do you choose? Well, uh, you can choose on the basis of what has the greatest amount of value, what resonates the deepest with your heart. Yeah. So probably on that note, what we can do is later, whenever you are free, you can just give me a call. And then we can discuss it one to one. You know, it's like you can tell me about your options, and I can then we can have a deeper conversation around that, so that we can figure out which one makes most sense for you. Great, that will be awesome. We'll be um, 
Vishnu jumping in here. Can you also yeah. help me help me understand what to do? I am so jealous of Prab. In a in a lighter note, you have so many options to choose. I'm just wondering what to do. You know, so you're in a better place, Prab. So uh, to that, I would say, Brinda, we are all in the same place because okay. I would say, see, uh, don't see, which is what I'm always talking about, which is we are here to shift our relationship and perceptions about money. Okay, and what we're really here to do is we are here to serve the planet. And what we need to do is we need to look at the world and understand what does the world need? What are the problems? And as I was just telling Ash that right now we are in a state of consciousness, which is fairly low actually in the world. There's lots and lots of dumb people doing lots of dumb things all around us. And so when we stop, like if you forget about money for a moment and you just look at the world, you will see that there are so many places where you can actually add value. The world is really looking for it. And so you figure out what is something that you deeply resonate with? What can you give to the best of your ability to the world? The money will sort itself out. Like you, it will come, there are a thousand resources. Like it will just, it will find you. That's not your challenge. You don't need to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. But but maybe someday towards the end of session, I would like to have a conversation on that, uh, Vishnu. Maybe I, I might, I would be in a position to come up with options and discuss with you, hopefully. See, uh, def, uh, okay, like, if you want, you can call me, like, whenever you're free. You know, it's like, this offer is open to everyone. You know, it's, uh, see, you all have my number. I'm there on WhatsApp. And see, it's my pleasure to help you guys as much as possible. That's what I really want to do. And see, I I never think of any conversation. Like, see, if I'm talking to you right now, in my imagination, right? Because I also told you that how our imagination has our most godlike ability. Like, I don't think like I'm just talking to you. Through you that I'm talking to all the people that you are also going to further impact. And that is something that I'm very clear on. Like, I want to maximize the amount of impact that I can possibly have on the planet. And this is something that I'm interested in doing. So, see, I want to create as much clarity as I possibly can. So, uh, right now itself, let me let me tell you, you know, it's like, to me, when I see the world, there are so many opportunities. Yeah. So, say, in terms of how I imagine the world can be. Like, we can have such a beautiful existence where imagine if more people are loving towards each other's, more people are honest and genuine towards each other's. And if we're able to create communities and ecosystems where people are able to like freely give their energies to each other's and have a wonderful time and have true genuine connections. That is such a beautiful thing, like so much joy, so much life can be experienced through that. Now, these things are not going to just build themselves. They will happen when we actively put in our energy in order to create that. And in order to do that first, we must upgrade ourselves and we must upgrade as many people as we possibly can, whoever is willing to receive. And so, for example, this is my way of doing it. Yeah. But then you can figure out that, you know, it's like, closest to your home, in your bubble of reality, what are the problems that you're noticing in the world? What are the things that you don't, like you think can be better? And then start by dreaming, start by imagining how those things can be better, how they can operate in a much nicer way. And then you can start working towards making that dream into a reality. And as you do that, what you will notice, and I guarantee this to you, I can write it and give it to you. As you start doing that, the universe will start to support you in every imaginable and unimaginable way. You will get surprised, like it will blow your mind, like in the unimaginable ways in which the universe can connect you to people, it can support you. The only thing you must understand is 
that we are blocking ourselves. If there is any problem in our life, this is the only problem. We are blocking ourselves. The universe is happy to give as much as it possibly can because the universe deeply loves us. Also, you can call me whenever you feel like. Sure, thank you. All right, cool. Any other questions from anyone else? Shriya, Eustace? Uh, I will come to you and ask you directly. Sure, man. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, what about the rest of you? Any questions? If no questions, Okay, if no one has any questions, then thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And that's about it from me. And you all have my number. If you guys need anything, please reach out. I'm happy to help out. Thank you so much, Vishnu. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, Vishnu. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.